let's talk about how to pass the video interview for BP. What's up guys, it's Mike from Job in English, here helping to break down the video interview processes for world famous companies to help you get through those pesky interviews and get on and get that job. Today we're going to be talking about BP, or British Petroleum, one of the largest oil and gas companies in the world. If you like this video and you'd like to see more like it, then make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit like on that video and drop us a comment down below, let us know how we did or which company that you'd like us to cover next. So let's get started in the usual fashion with five fast facts about BP. Number one. BP has a long and illustrious history and actually BP has been going for over 110 years and started off in 1909 as the Anglo-Persian Oil Company. Fact number two, BP operates all over the world and its merger with Amoco in 1998 made it one of the largest oil and gas concerns in the entire world. And in fact, last year they had revenues in excess of $230 billion. Number three, BP in recent years unfortunately became infamous and tied to the 2010 Deepwater Verizon oil rig scandal where the Deepwater Verizon oil rig exploded and released almost 5 million barrels of oil into the Gulf of Mexico. BP as a result ended up paying almost $25 billion in damages and fines. Fact number four, in 2003, BP unveiled a new slogan, Beyond Petroleum, as they made a push into renewable energy. However, over that time, they actually pulled back a little bit and they even closed their solar unit in 2012. Since then, BP has made a commitment to be net zero for carbon emissions by 2050. And finally, fact five, BP is ranked number five in the top 10 biggest oil and gas companies for one of the best places to work for in the world. Let's talk about interview format. BP's interview is a video interview. You can expect something from higher view and you're gonna have about five or six questions with pretty standard timings. Probably two minutes to answer and one minute to think about your answer. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go through seven common questions and I'm also going to cover a few bonus questions in my own inimitable style and talk to you about what we need to think about with these questions and how we would think about answering them and why. So let's jump into the most common questions. Question one, what motivated you to join BP? So my regulars will know that this is a question that is almost always going to come up. And in fact, even if you don't see it covered by other people on a website like Glassdoor, wiki jobs or student rooms, this is certainly something that you should always prepare for. So what we want to think about in this question is picking out four or five key facts that are going to fit into our time scale that are interesting, unique and specific to you. You can, do, you can find those out by looking at their annual report, just reading up on news about BP or just looking at their about us and company page. There is a lot of information out there for you to find. What you want to avoid are generic answers that make you sound the same as everybody else. We want to be specific and not be generic. Also, we want to be memorable in some way. For example, with the five fast facts that I picked out about BP, minus the Deepwater Horizon scandal, which brings me to a really interesting point. Recently, a client asked me, should they ever cover a piece of negative news for a business? And I think no. Genuinely, there's a lot of good news out there about big companies and also bad news just because they are large institutions and organizations. So we want to avoid any type of negative press. If you're not sure how to do that, then you can find out about how to answer this question from my why this company question video, which is in one of the videos. It's either going to be up here or you can search that from Job Ready English or you can go and take our cover letters that get interview course on Skillshare where I explain to you about exactly how to answer this question, how many facts you should have, and what are the best sources for those facts. Question two, why did you apply to this role? We always want to be thinking about what is our motivation beyond the simple fact that we need a job and we want to earn some money. That doesn't make us different from other candidates. 
So when thinking about answering this question, you really want to answer it in two parts. The first part would be explaining what you would do in the job. This is something that you can get from the job description. So you want to think about what would I do day to day? Who would I work with? What department would I be in? What would my daily tasks be like? Am I studying for a qualification? And only in the second part of the question, which is generally the way that people answer, do you want to talk about why you're the right person for the job? And you can match this up with the skills. In every job description, there's going to be some skills which are listed, which will probably be like good to have, and maybe some additional skills which would be nice to have, but not necessary. So you can learn a lot from using the job description to answer this question in two parts. As I just discussed, the common mistake that I see when candidates answer this question is they just talk about themselves and why they're so awesome and good for the role. They don't match themselves effectively to the job description, which is really what the employer is looking for. They know that they have lots of good candidates, but they want somebody who understands the role and will have the skills to make themselves a good fit for this job. Again, if you're not sure how to answer this question, you can look up our other video, Why This Role, or you can check out our free Skillshare course with a link in the description down below. Question three, how well do you work in a team? Now on the face of it, this appears to be a strength-based question. Strength-based questions tend to trigger just a basic psychological response, like I work well in the team, I really enjoy it, I like speaking to people, I'm very good at interpersonal communication. But I would suggest this is more of a competency-based question, so we'd want to add a little example in this as well. So you could say, I work really well in the team, in my most recent job, I'm actually a barista at Starbucks. I tend to work as a team of six. So not only are we really super busy during the day and we have to cover each other, make sure that we're in sync to work through customers' orders, but also at the end of the day, we have to make sure that we work well as a team when we clean everything down and make sure that the shop is ready for tomorrow. When thinking about demonstrating being good in the team, you always want to think about with competency questions, what are the skills that demonstrate I'm good at a team? Well, generally it's communication, the ability to resolve conflict, to make decisions, to stay on target with the goal at hand, and to be able to be flexible and adaptable to other people's needs. Because one of the biggest joys of working in a team is that you get to work with other people, and that can sometimes be one of the biggest difficulties because you have to adjust your personality and way of doing things to the other members in the team to suit and fit into that community. Question four, why do you want to work in the energy industry? Now this is a particularly relevant question for somebody who hasn't studied anything to do with oil and gas. Maybe you studied accounting and finance or business and you're making the transition over from what would be a normal career path into financial or professional services or banking and you're actually deciding that you want to target oil and gas. One of my biggest tips for this question is that you should read about the industry. You should know more about it. Recently, we were helping a candidate with their cover letter to help them get into a university, which is some work that we do every so often as it comes up. And one of the things that she was really very good at is demonstrating quite clearly why she was keen to work in the energy industry as a result of her university degree because she cared a lot about the environment, she put in some research into national, natural disasters, and she kind of felt that it was her personal responsibility that if she wanted to see a change in the world, then she should be the change. And definitely the big theme over the next 20, 30 years is going to be all about net zero carbon emissions and renewable energy. And this is a great space to work in. So have a look online, read some industry journals, go out and do your own research and make sure that you're delivering an answer which is relevant to you rather than a canned response which you think somebody is going to want to hear. Question five, what prior experience do you have that makes you suitable for the job role? I like this question, it's quite interesting because what I tend to find is, particularly for university graduates, they really struggle with this question because they think that their part-time job doesn't make them applicable for doing this role. Because they say, well, I used to work in a restaurant or a supermarket or as a delivery driver or you know, in a coffee shop, but that's not relevant for me going to work in the oil and gas industry. But actually, it all is. 
This is what we call transferable skills. So we want to think about the fact that, take for example, my first job was working in KFC in Blue Water. I found it really quite stressful, though I enjoyed working KFC, but it taught me to be much better at my other jobs because I had the ability to work under pressure, to communicate with my team, to meet deadlines, to resolve conflicts, and also to have good customer facing skills, mainly because people wanted to get their food and if it didn't come in time, then they got really upset. So something that you can do with this is you can have a look at that job description, figure out what are the skills that they need, and then you can relate that to your experience. And everybody has some element of experience which can be applied in a professional context. Of course, we all know that meme, no work experience, no job, but that's not actually been the case. What I find is, is that people aren't able to adequately communicate the fact that they've learned those transferable skills in a job, in an extracurricular activity, or even just in their academic studies and say, well, look, I have worked in a team, I have resolved conflicts, I have met deadlines, I am capable of doing those things, and so they relate it back to the skills and the job description. Question six, explain the time you faced the challenge in the workplace and how you overcame this challenge. Now again, for anybody watching this who doesn't have work experience, just think about the clubs and societies you've been in, your hobbies or groups that you're a part of, or even just in your academics doing group work. Everybody has come across conflict where basically you've had a disagreement with someone else. A lot of times it's just about communication. Some important things that we want to remember about conflict is, first of all, we're not going to have a blazing row in front of everybody or seek to shame that person just because we don't want to be seen to be wrong. A lot of times when I've seen conflict resolution dealt with poorly, in my experience of running and owning businesses, is that the managers that I have trained have basically felt like it's some kind of power struggle and they have to be seen to be right. But the way that I approach conflict resolution is always to, number one, make sure you do that with a cool head, that sometimes you need to cool off a little bit or address that concern the next day. Number two, speak to that person one-on-one. -on -one. You're instantly going to diffuse that situation if you take them out of a group context. I remember at one of the businesses that I ran, we used to have a little storeroom out in the back and I would take the manager or the member of staff and first of all, I'd listen to their point of view. So I'd say, hey, Chris, what was all that about? You seem to have had a bit of a disagreement with another coach or member of your team. What's going on? This is really important because it gives people the opportunity to speak and to be heard and also to clearly communicate all the information outside of the heat of the moment. And it could well be that that person is right. They may disclose information to you which you weren't previously aware of and then you can seek some kind of resolution or compromise, whether that be about their perception, the information that they've received, or really just sitting those two people down together and acting as a mediator between the two. Resolving conflict in a workplace is really important because it's inevitable that there's going to be a clash. The difference is, is that in a work context, you have a very clear set of deadlines, goals, and things that you need to achieve, which are laid out in the job description. So it's fairly easy to kind of come back to the point because of course there's a difference between a workplace conflict around an item of work when actually it's very easy to quantify that, i.e. to put some data behind it like what does the project entail, what is everyone's um, role within that project, what are the tasks that they have to achieve, what is the specific source of the conflict. And again, like I said, a lot of times it really comes down to just poor communication or preparation where somebody hasn't really had a conversation and therefore they've done stuff that another person has done or they've done something differently or they've had incorrect or out of date information when they've made a decision and action something. So I just want a couple, a couple of other questions that came up that I thought were quite interesting. So there's four of these. Number one, how do your qualifications help you in this job role? This is really relevant to graduates, again, who have studied outside of the oil and gas industry. Sometimes they really struggle to make that crossover between this is what I did and this is what I'm going to do. And the truth is a lot of the beliefs that I see being held by graduates are not actually true. For example, they say, oh, I can't work there. I've had no, I've had no work experience. I can't work there. I studied something else. The truth is companies don't really care. 
because they're looking for um, fresh young talent that is bright, ambitious and is willing to put in the work that they can then train into that method of working. And that would be true even if you moved from one bank to another bank, one of the big four professional services companies to another one, each company has a different method of working. There's a lot of things that you can drill into, whether that be the soft skills that you've learned, like communication, teamwork, conflict resolution, leadership, or it could be harder skills, like if you've learned to code, or your use of statistics and maths, or all those other things. Again, just think about that job description. Think about the day-to-day -day tasks and the additional skills that you're going to need. Question two, what personal traits do you like about yourself and what do you think you need to develop? I really like this question. For example, if I said, if somebody asked me this question and said, what personal traits do you like about yourself and what do you need to develop? For me, very much so, it's my ability to get things done, to be consistent, to think in terms of the long term and to be very much quality rather than quantity orientated in the production of my work. Skills I need to develop generally tend to be my attention to detail and maybe you know dropping off little things or just not having the time to get everything done. I think this is a great place as well just to have a little bit of a touch of honesty. A lot of times candidates are scared to be honest because they think that's going to disqualify them from the job. But I can say personally in my experience, like we've just hired a new member of the team and I tend to find honesty quite endearing actually. I feel like it shows maturity and a strong ability to self-assess. Question three, what is one thing you find interesting about BP? So this is really a shorter version of why BP. As long as you've done your research and made out, made sure to pick out some key facts, then you'll have no problem answering this. And finally, question four, what skills have you learned by working in a team? Again, this is all about BP's emphasis of working in a team. The fact that a lot of the times you're probably gonna be working with people who are gonna be uh, not just with you face to face, but also across the country and potentially across continents because BP has an access to such a wide range of specialists. I mean, as a reflection of what I've learned to work in a team, it would be to be prepared, to be patient, to listen to other people, to bear in mind their needs, not just my own, to uh, also, I've learned that actually a lot of the times if I am very clear from the outset in terms of my expectations and what needs to be done for a particular project or client, then the team tends to function very well. It's only if you kind of adopt what we used to call a seagull style, style of management, which is you fly in, you crap on people and then you leave, that you tend to find teams tend to not just break down, but also they internally become some kind of conflict and strife. And a lot of times it is regularly going back to people and saying, are you okay? Do you have all the information that you need? Having regular check-ins with the team, making sure that everything's there. And also there's a clear record and particularly now using some type of project management software. Another thing I tend to find with complex teams or technically gifted teams, is a lot of times it's about the documentation and the management of that process, which will really make or break the entire team itself in terms of being able to get things done. That's it guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget, if you don't already, subscribe to the channel, hit like on this video, and drop us down a comment below and let us know your experience with BP, why you're applying to them, and what other companies you'd like us to cover in the future past the interview videos. Good luck.